Let me get this out of the way. The War for Wakanda update is Marvel's Avengers best content edition yet, but in a lot of ways, it's also the most disappointing. While the Taking Aim and Future Imperfect DLCs were deep into development by the time the game initially launched, the War for Wakanda seems to be Crystal Dynamics' response to criticisms lobbied against Avengers from the jump, and it's just not good enough. War for Wakanda takes the Avengers to the titular fictional African country, where AIM has hired Ulysses Claw to mine vibranium in their continued efforts to build weapons for the impending Kree invasion. Since Captain America's presumed death five years prior, Wakanda has closed its borders, with King T'Challa, the Black Panther, hesitant at first to team up with the reformed Avengers. I'm happy that the War for Wakanda moves the story away from dealing with AIM directly, as the time-traveling shenanigans of the previous updates felt stale by the end. That being said, this expansion feels like yet another stepping stone to another meaty campaign, rather than the well-executed story in its own right. It helps that God of War's Christopher Judge's experienced T'Challa, other than Kamala Khan, is the game's most compelling character yet and the ending of the War for Wakanda leaves the nation in an interesting place, something that feels inherently unique from the Black Panther film. I also truly loved seeing and exploring Wakanda, something that has only been lightly touched upon so far in the MCU. But here's where the disappointments come in. While Wakanda looks great, it doesn't particularly feel that different from the rest of the game. It's a much more lush version of the previous Pacific Northwest forest region, with updated elements like loot boxes and health canisters that fit in with the Wakandan aesthetics. But the moment to moment feels the same. Crystal Dynamics is clearly trying to expand what the framework of the game is capable of. But if this expansion is any indication, there's not a ton of wiggle room. I was also disappointed to see that there were none of the well-designed linear missions that made the campaign so great, and instead, the expansion is comprised solely of the open, cobbled-together areas that define the multiplayer experience. Oh, and trust me, there's still a ton of visual bugs. One of the key points the developer touted before the launch of War for Wakanda was new puzzles that were more involved and thought-provoking than what came before. Disappointingly, they are simply riffs on the old puzzles, now having to step on or hit switches in a certain order or with certain markings. Some are a little bit more involved with specific timing needed, but they hardly test the abilities or mental prowess of the player much more. But what about the man of the hour, the new hero, Black Panther? For the most part, he shares a lot in common with Captain America in terms of gameplay. I was expecting this character, like the puzzles, to really push the flexibility of what the game was capable of but that seems to be an incredibly rigid design. The new intrinsic ability where Black Panther can parry attacks to absorb their energy and unleash it in a single blast once the intrinsic meter is full is something that is unique to the character. That being said, any Avengers player knows that parrying in the heat of a battle is a difficult thing to pull off in the game, and if you mistime it, not only do you get hit, but your intrinsic meter is depleted slightly. So getting to the point where you can unleash the energy blast is difficult to pull off. If War for Wakanda is meant to bring new and returning players back into the fold, the Black Panther isn't the slam dunk that he needed to be, and new players might have a tough time wrapping their heads around him. Another gameplay addition designed to switch things up comes in the form of sonic disruptor attacks that the enemies can use to cloud your vision. However, they are far too disabling, and the drones that can emit them appear too frequently and are too hard to try and destroy when impeded. I discussed this new feature with other players in the Avengers Discord, and not only did many agree, some complained that the visual made them sick. I wouldn't be surprised if the developer walked this feature back in an upcoming patch. On top of that, the final boss battle of the expansion is the game's most difficult yet, pitting you in a situation that requires incredible focus and understanding of the game's mechanics. If you just jump into the game for the first time since launch or ever, you're going to have a hard time getting past it. War for Wakanda is just another fine update to Avengers, when in order to give players new and old confidence, it had to be great. The expansion's inability to really get creative with the game's formula does not bode well for future releases.
Thank you.